Mm-hmm. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm Mike, Michael Smith, and I have with me Kim Warner, the head of this operation. She doesn't realize it, but she is. And she's the director of this particular podcast. Uh, tell her where we're from. Tell the audience where we're from. We're in Las Vegas right now on Maryland Parkway. Michael is from California and I'm from Detroit, but Renewed Mind is actually um, located at 1311 Maryland Parkway in Las Vegas, Nevada. And um, every Thursday morning we record because we're talking about topics that's going to accentuate anyone's life that wants to change. Uh, So the topic that uh, we chose that came to me the other day was about position and positioning. And and when I when I speak about position or positioning, I'm I'm talking about it in a worldly sense and then also in, in a spiritual sense, mm-hmm. uh, because uh, they're both joined together when when you really take a look at things. Our position in, in a worldly sense, you know, we, we play many different roles. Uh, we're parent, we're friend, we're employer, we're employee, uh, we are helper. Uh, someone that needs help, uh, many, many different roles, but each one of them puts you in a certain position, you yeah. know, uh, the, the, the optimum position that I've discovered in my years of being here is being in a position where you can help someone else, uh, being in a position where you could provide Wisdom. Yes. You know, being in a position where you can model the type of behavior that is desired that will that will get you uh, to the place where you want to be. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, so, and that reminds me, uh, position it, it, it is not a, a a place where you remain. Mm-hmm. You, your position is going to change as you grow, yeah. as, as, as you evolve. Your position changes, but there's one position that never changes, and uh, that's uh, spiritually. Your position spiritually. You grow and evolve spiritually, but your position in spirit will always be the center. Yeah. You will always be the center spiritually. You know, and, and, and I'm going to repeat, you're always evolving spiritually because as you gain knowledge, you gain wisdom, and you learn different things. Uh, you see different things, but you're always at, at, at the center, and I say that because when, when it's a, like in the Bible, it says, you know, uh, God created everything, and then on the seventh day, he rested. That means the, all the work was complete, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And and as being, and as being, and as being spiritual mm-hmm. beings, mm-hmm. that means we, all that God is, mm-hmm. is us spiritually at the same time. Right. All that God is is he, is right where I sit. All that God is is right where Kim sits. Right. All that God is is wherever you are. Uh, which like we're always what was that Mount Sinai when when uh, the burning bush and, and it was said that uh, the ground you stand on is hollow ground. Mm-hmm. It was not because that earth was hollow. It was because he was standing there. Mm-hmm. Because wherever he stood it would be holy. holy ground. Yeah. And, and, and that was what we must realize. And that realization, knowing who you really are mm-hmm. in relationship to what you believe to your God, will transform into how you react, how you conduct yourself and what you do in the in the world mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because the, the more knowledgeable the more aware I became spiritually uh, the better decision I started making for myself in this world mm-hmm. when you when you realize the true power that you are and I didn't say that you possess I said the true power that you are Mm-hmm. You, be, you you make better choices 
for your life. You you direct your life. Your life is then lived on purpose. True. I, I, I um, concur. Um, I was listening to um, the Seven Hermetic um, Principles this morning. I was telling Michael, and um, I keyed in on cause and effect. But then it reminded me of be the cause. You know, don't be the effect. So my position at this point in time is looking around um, and actually analyzing my surroundings. Do I like what I see or do I not? And it's up to me as I take responsibility to change it. Of course, you know, um, a lot of people don't understand the power that we um, have been given. But if we take some time to actually look at how we speak things and they happen, um, whether it be positive or negative, we can understand how we positioned ourselves in such a place. And when you brought positioning up on Tuesday to discuss it, I liked it because we're in a great transformation on a worldly sense. A lot of people feel like they're missing God or God is not there. But God is moving. It's us that become stuck. And uh, from the conversation that we had um, on Tuesday, I even began to talk to the staff and I've been telling them for months, look at the chain reactions around you in the business. If you don't look at home and you'll find your position is changing. Don't come to work to work. Come to be a part of creating. Our position is powerful everywhere that we go, but we don't sit down in most cases with people that can help elevate our thoughts. That's one of the problems, or we don't want to listen to anything outside of what we learned in our immediate environments, what we grew up in, but then the change that I seek will give me a position, whether it's good or bad, because I seek to change. And life is experimental. That's what this physical life is all about. Mm -hmm. You know, it's stepping out on faith. Mm -hmm. You know, reaching, reaching for something, and you have no evidence that you will get there, but you have faith that you will get there. Mm -hmm. Uh, You have a vision in your mind when you're setting goals. You have a vision of of where you where you want to get to, what you want to be. Right. Mm -hmm. And you start with nothing. But you have a firm belief that if you do things the right way, (laughs) you're going to get the right result. Right. Right. Along the way, there will be many missteps, bumps Mm -hmm. or whatever you want to call them. But that is life. Right. That is how we learn. You you know, you you learn more from your mistakes than you will from your successes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, And and. And therefore, your mistakes be, become your triumphs. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, once I thought that I was a, a terrible person mm-hmm. because I did terrible things. And, and, and when I learned the lessons, because at that time, like she said, I was the cause. And the effect that I was experiencing was a direct result of my cause, That's what cool. I've done, mm-hmm. right? And... Within that, there were lessons to be learned. Mm-hmm. The moment that I opened up, I surrendered mm-hmm. my uh, false power mm-hmm. and surrendered to the true power that I was. Mm-hmm. All those lessons rushed back in and and, and, and and filled me up. And my path opened up for me. And then I am who I am now. So I like that because you position yourself in a cause and you took the risk as you were at that time. You yes. got the, the effects of negative. Yes. And that brush, what it does is it primes us. Yes. Do you realize what your choices are, Kim or Michael? Right. You don't like it? Okay, what can you do to change it? That's what life is actually saying to right. us. Right. You know, your position. You took the position of cause. A person mm-hmm. may, and I was just thinking about a case I've been dealing with for the mm-hmm. last few weeks. Uh, A lady, through choices she made and people that she aligned herself with, she she became homeless, Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Her choice to remain homeless is her responsibility. Mm -hmm. 
Things happen to you in this world that will knock you off your course, will knock you off your feet, you know. It is up to you to, to lay there or stand back up mm -hmm. and, and change, mm -hmm. you know, because everything that happens to you happens for you to change, you know, for you for you to grow into your to your next level, mm -hmm. you know, where you where you belong. It, it, but if you remain in, in that misery, if you remain in that depression, you you remain in that anger, mm -hmm. you re, you remain in that feeling of revenge. That is a choice you've made, mm -hmm. and and it's a choice that you made where right. you have yet to take responsibility for being there. Right. right. Um, the responsibility is um, accepting where you are, not fighting it, looking at it um, from a diplomatic state, and then moving forward. Now, it's not always easy if you're in a situation of homelessness, but you got to get back to a place of peace and knowing that mentally you can overcome it. Because if you don't master the situation or find the ability to master it, then you won't be able to overcome it. But one of the things that as we're talking about positioning, um, society has positioned us to believe that life is supposed to go great every day. And that's false. It's a false belief. We're going to have turbulent times because we have a, a society that we, um, we're congruent with that thinks different, which means that our thoughts clash anyway. So we're positioned in a place where we have to accept that a challenge is going to come. Just because I made it over that hurdle doesn't mean that other hurdles are not coming. And I find talking to a lot of people that because society has made things so easy and America is a material capitalistic type of world. We think on that level. We think that material things are the means to all ends. If we don't have what everybody else has, we're no good. Things don't make us who we are. We make us who we are. So if we're in a state as um, Michael brought up the case of homelessness, I'm not judging. I'm simply no. saying that I, I have to get back to a place where my belief system is working for me because my choices are not predicated off of, and that's something I've conditioned my mind to from uh, growing up. My life is not designed by everybody else's life. My life is designed by mine. So when I look at the next person and they're living in a house, I might need this experience of what I'm going through so that I can help somebody else that's going to go through it. Just because you live in a house and I live in an apartment, so to speak, doesn't mean that I have to be what you are. I have to be who I am so that I can learn my experience. That's why I was positioned. Yeah, yeah we positioned and something you said that just jumped out at me. Uh, when I, I said, talking about becoming homeless or uh, wherever you may find yourself. Even in a state of homelessness, mm -hmm. you're still in the center mm -hmm. spiritually. Mm -hmm. Being homeless, uh, being addicted to drugs, being in an abusive situation, yeah. none of that changes who you really are. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the struggle is is not to allow those things that happen to you mm -hmm. change who you really That's are. It. It's how we respond to those situations mm -hmm. is what determines what your position will be. You know, I, we've all experienced setbacks. We've all experienced knockdowns. But the only difference is we don't stay down. We don't allow that. I spoke on it the other day uh, that different things have happened to me, you know, but I chose not to respond. Mm -hmm. Likewise, mm -hmm. people sick. come at me with anger mm -hmm. and, and, and with all kind of rage, but I don't respond mm -hmm. in anger and rage. Mm -hmm. I respond with who I truly am, and mm -hmm. that's a calm individual. Right. Mm -hmm. you, you know, that's what the challenge will always be, uh, regardless. You becoming homeless, you being fired from your job, whatever, you know, getting a divorce, it doesn't mean that you're a bad person. Mm -hmm. You're still a good person, but bad things happen to good people. Right. And I, I believe that these things actually happen to challenge us to be better. Some people take 
the low road. However, if someone um, has divorced you, um, you might be taking the road to think about the situation too much and not think about what you can do for yourself now exactly. or where you can go. You might be thinking right. about the pain too much and that becomes the master of your life. Right. And that's the key. The drugs um, that someone takes, it, it becomes the master of their life. You know, pain, it begets gain. But it's always going to be a season of pain for a human because we're in the earth to learn. You know, if I hate, then I'm going to attract hateful things simply because I position myself to attract hate. That's what my mind is on. Yeah. I'm not thinking about love. I don't have all of the money or whatever I desire because I'm thinking about hate. I'm not thinking about how to move in line or position myself with what I desire. The thing that I'm, I'm thinking about more of is what I don't have. And as long as I don't have, I won't have right. mentally. That's right. That's but right. when I begin to see those things as though they are, and I, it reminds me of Jeremiah. In Jeremiah 1, I talk to people, and a lot of times what I find is on a biblical level, because the Bible is so psychological, we miss the meat of it. Where Jeremiah was a prophet, and prophets, what they do is profit you. So everyone has a prophet in them. You have to take that position. What we don't know in most cases or we don't line up with is people that encourage us to profit our lives. In that, God was teaching uh, Jeremiah to see the things in his mind that he would have to deal with. A cause of worldly issues is what Jeremiah had. And he was like, I'm a child, you know, mm -hmm. and God said, don't say that. So even children need to know that God begins in the mind of man because God had a mind to create the world. The mind is the field or the playground uh, of blessings, or it is the, 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 uh, the field of slavery, uh, the field of captivity. If you feel limited in anything that you do, your position is going to be limited in life. If you feel free, then you think about freedom and you will become free. I remember um, everyone got upset with Kanye West about him talking about slavery was a choice. It is, though. I, I think that what it, the point is, is that you got to explain to people what you're saying, because everyone is not conscious and privy to the fact that the reason why they allow people to come to America, number one, is because there's more money for the ones that are leading this country. So if the, if you pay tax dollars, you have to do it. If you're working, you, you, you're a slave. You're a slave to wages. You understand? And, and I'll take That's it. a position. It is. And, and I'll take it, uh, show another way of seeing that. Uh, slavery, I, I liken to imprisonment, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You can go to prison, right? They can lock you up physically, but they cannot lock you up mentally, mentally. or spiritually. Mm -hmm. you, uh, and I say that, and I'm talking from personal experience. I, I served six years, mm -hmm. and uh, this was the best six years of my life because I used that six years to change me, to become someone that would never go through that experience again. And when I came out, I was a different person. I, I had direction, I, I had focus, and here I sit now. Right, being so able, being able to speak. You, you put yourself in that position, and that's what we're talking about. It's a prime example. You you use the cause and the effects of positioning yourself to do a thing for so many years, but the end of that was I need to be physically in prison, but yeah. your mind was not in was, prison. See, free. that's the key. I was free. I, 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 I did at no time did I feel like I was locked up mm. because I was working on doing something for me. Right. I was making use of my time. The time was not using me. I was using it. Wherever you find yourself, you're in control. Right. We might have been brought over here right. as slaves to work. Mm -hmm. But one thing it never did is break the spirit. Right. 
it's, it's, it's important for people to understand the part that yes. rules within you yes. is not confined to anything. It can go wherever it wants because a person yes. that is in prison, even when we sit here, you know, we deal with people that are mentally in prison, but their minds can be unlocked through, I, I will say this, meditation, yes. prayer works. I believe in going within because no one can go within me. No one can go within and take anything from me unless I give it to them. So I am the authority on who I am. And that is what our work is. It is so. To, to, to bring others to understand exactly. that same truth mm -hmm. about themselves. Mm -hmm. Because that truth exists for all of us. Right. So when, when a person allows themselves to be positioned with depression or we've talked about narcissism. The narcissistic behavior is like a, 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 a persistent ego that will not stop when you look up narcissism. And I'm using it as an example because a lot of times we deal with people that have been in relationships with narcissistic behavior. But narcissism is all throughout the uh, United States, honestly. So narcissists, what it wants to do is rule and master, but it wants to be the favorable cause. It won't do without being favorable. It is the thing to be. Therefore, it is imprisoned in itself and it will imprison others because it will make anyone that is attached to it feel as though they're nothing. When you come to a place of feeling like you're nothing, you have to begin to look at, is this the place and position that I want to be in? And you also have to understand that I don't want to be, if that's your thought process, connected to that and then free yourself. You see, that is slavery. So we have we have slavery conditions on so many different um, levels of understanding. You take it to a place where I think someone was asking me or Diamond was asking me yesterday about commitment. You can be committed to uh, someone that has put you in vices mm -hmm. and chains and you don't want to give it up because you just believe that it's going to. But if they don't believe on a uni unified basis that we are one and we agreed on being in a relationship, being yeah. in a workspace yeah. together, yeah. then our position will come to a breaking point because it's breaking you or it's breaking them. Yeah. Any relationship that exists any relation, I don't care what kind of relationship it is, both parties have to be agreeable to just it write it down just because you're in love don't mean yeah. that yeah. so if you're in a, in a relationship with a narcissist, he's a narcissist because you're alive mm -hmm. if you're in a relationship with someone that's abusive, they're abusive because you're alive so you're positioned yourself for pain, yes. you gotta accept that it's not them You you know, even if a person is narcissist why are you attracted to narcissists? There's a level of narcissist in you. And, and we don't want to get off the topic. You're positioning yourself for pain. So now your deed is experimentally in your life to find out if that's where you're supposed to be. Should I move out of it? Is it going to change? And in most cases, when you deal with narcissists, it's not going to change because they're insecure. Narcissist believes that it's right. Um, so the position. How do you get to... The position of overcoming or the position of less of pain and struggle. First, you have to realize where you are. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to understand this is not where I want to be. Mm -hmm. and Then you take the steps to move to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. I, I, I ask people you know, paint a picture with their words of, a, of a, what a perfect life would be. Where would they like to be? Mm -hmm. What kind of house they would like to live in? You know, when they wake up in the morning, what do they see? Mm -hmm. They go into their closet, what do they see? In their bathroom, what do they see? What do you see yourself? Mm -hmm. And then when they paint that picture now, now, what are you doing to make that happen? You know, if you're not doing anything to make it happen, it's just a dream. Right. But when you when you start working towards making those things happen, making that life come mm -hmm. true, mm -hmm. then you're working towards a goal. True. And it's up to you because, honestly, you're the master. You seek higher understanding through your prayer and your spiritual meditation. You know, I would never tell anyone that comes 
into um, renewed mind that you can do it by yourself. You have a physical body, but you have a spirit and that's the part that's free. You connect with your spirit man daily or more than um, two or three times daily so that you can get the strength and fortification to live the way that your spirit man wants you to. In the direction. Exactly. Because the direction will come to you in a moment of quiet. Right. In, when, when, in the moments of peace. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and self, when you go inward, when you when you give yourself a chance to block out mm -hmm. all the clutter and the tr trash from the outside world mm -hmm. and, and just get quiet and still, you you will get the right the, the vision, the thoughts, mm -hmm. the action you you should take will come to you. True. True. So it's it's your your change comes and the repositioning comes by going within <clears throat> and looking at I actually don't want this. I do believe that there's more for me. I do believe that if I can have guidance or get guidance, then I will be able to have these things as a belief system always. You're always going to go back. So even as Michael brought up a homeless individual, my belief system is the foundation of what will get me where I need to. That's the locomotive, the train. But as long as I feel like or I'm defeated in my feelings or I'm depressed or I'm angry, I hate. As long as I, I use those lower thoughts, I'm never going to rise. Yeah. I'm not going to overcome. Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, do you have anything you want to add before we conclude? No. But, no? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, no. <clears throat> wherever you find yourself in life mm -hmm. doesn't mean that that's your final stop. Mm -hmm. It's temporary. It will pass. But it will not pass until you do the work necessary in order to make it pass. Yes, it's work. So you have to put in the work. If you're sitting on your couch and you feel like you're hurting, you're depressed, you know, we're at 1311 Maryland Parkway in Las Vegas, Nevada. We're here to help. We have counselors such as Michael. We have MFTs to help with marriage um, and family. Um, and we have groups every week. Um, you can call us at 702 six two nine six five five um for whatever mental health needs you have and um we'll see you next week all right you peace. guys peace mm -hmm.